Mitsujan, Raikachan. What's up guys, welcome to this episode of Car Rent. So we are picking up right where we left off with the Evo. It's literally the same day as the last recording. So we are about to go to the shop to look over the fuses because some of our technician friends are thinking that it could be a fuse issue. So yeah, I, at this point guys, honestly, I love the car. It's beautiful, it looks great but it's not running so great. So it's kind of a disappointment. Uh, I'm just hoping that we can get this car to work beautifully and perfectly this week. That way we can start driving the car and start putting it to use because the insurance on this car, Mitsuchan, is almost up and the insurance on that car is about to start. So just pray with me that we can get this thing fixed and figured out because this has become an extremely long endeavor and process and let's just get on with the rest of this episode let's do this let's do this so here's where we're at there are a number of fuses that are the wrong amperage which is the amount of voltage and amps that the circuit in question needs or can handle that said, I've been sitting here on the ground practically, going in and out of the uh, fuse area here in the car just to make sure that this thing works. So, note to any of y'all watching, if this thing tells you exactly what size you need, use that size. You are not smarter than the people that built the car. Alright, so, ran the car, and this time the light came on faster than it did before, so, not sure at this point what it is. I'm going to set you down for a second. Honestly, not sure what it is anymore just because we've done just about everything we can to this car In fact, actually, let me set this up So I have some great news. It works. Oh my gosh It works. Yeah It is amazing it cranks that bit of exhaust or smoke. I don't know if you can see it on camera or not Comes out right there. That's from the resonator there's a big old hole in it, so that'll get changed out. We won't smell that no more. Oh boy. It looks like water is getting collected underneath because that looks like a drip pattern, but it runs, it functions, and that's what was important. And that check engine light is gone. My landlord literally just drove by saying how much he loved the car. That makes me feel really good about this purchase right now. <laughs> So, for this week's episode, here's what's going on. We have to make this car legal to drive in Virginia. Now, some stuff has already been done, like new tires. Um, some of the stuff has been replaced, like the windshield wipers. Little things like that. Virginia is pretty finicky when it comes to the safety inspection. One of the major things that has to be changed, thanks to the way Virginia is, is the exhaust pipe. So, what happened with this car, because you guys are actually sitting on top of the Evo right now, is that there is a massive hole in the resonator and it's causing for a lot of noise, a lot of rattling underneath. Uh, there's also just every time you shift you hear it clunk and clink because it's not like, so the pipe is normally very strong and connected. With that hole it's able to flex and bend a bit and it's causing the hole to get bigger. And honestly after driving it, you know, 60 miles yesterday, I'm pretty sure that the hole is even bigger than it was when I saw it last. So what we're doing is we're actually going to be putting in the HKS exhaust that you saw a couple episodes ago and we're going to just install it today. It's really easy. It's not hard to do. People make exhaust sound like it's a really big deal and there's a lot of big money that goes into it because you could get a thousand dollar exhaust or you can go like I did and get a three hundred dollar exhaust. Either way it's something that I definitely recommend that people do because it just brings a whole new life to the car, but it also is something really fun and easy that you can do, and it's a good bonding experience if you got other people with you because it's just, you did something cool and built something together. So, for the exhaust itself, here is one of the pieces. 
This is basically the axle back portion, and this is the cat back portion. And basically, if I remember this correctly, I believe it's this piece that will connect to the other half and uh, complete the pipe work. And this, I believe, connects to the catalytic converter. Obviously, when we go underneath, we'll see and we'll know for sure. This right now is just partially speculation, partially experience, I guess you could say, because I've actually done an HKS uh, axle back exhaust install on a Honda Civic for a friend of mine. No, I did not film it. Uh, kind of wish I did, because it was really easy, and it was just a really fun modification, and it sounds great. about you guys but that sounds amazing this is seriously the latest start of my day ever it went from really really nice and sunny to uh, right around 45 degrees and breezy so guys I have some interesting news for you all this lens is filthy to quote TJ Hun for the bros but let's let's be let's be serious for a minute. Some good news, very good news. I uh, sadly did not film much yesterday. When it comes to Raikachan here, I'm standing next to her. There's an interesting little thing I need to show you guys. <laughs> yes. She passed inspection, fellas. We're good to go. And as you guys know, we have been working hard to try and get this car to work try and get her to run correctly and we're almost there that wasn't good that's belt squeal and that is a torn CV sound Alright, so when I said the car wasn't out of the woods yet, I wasn't kidding. Literally, we had filmed an entire section for today's episode of Car Rant, and instead of releasing all of that, I said I have to do this, because right in front of my house, at the very end of this segment, this CV boot was completely torn open, there was no more sludge, and the bearings on the inside were now grinding and squealing against each other, and it was a bad thing. So I limped her over parked the car and said all right this is a problem so here's the full story with what else has to happen to uh Riga chan cv boot needs to be replaced number one number two the car still has to pass emissions number three the tune has to be partially reset thanks to the fact that there are aftermarket parts on the car which leads to number four need to get an air intake system to complement the other new parts that are on the car. And sadly, last but not least, number five, I have to get the transmission partially rebuilt. So as far as the transmission goes, some of the synchros that are inside of the transmission to make sure everything stays in time and all of that, some of them are partially damaged. And that could be because there's the wrong fluid in there. I don't really know. All I know is that because of the issues that we've had, I really don't want to push Raikachan around right now, at least not until the CV is fixed. Because once the CV is fixed and then we still have other issues, then I'm going to know like this is going to be an interesting situation. But I, I want to kind of pause on this series and get into what we normally do, just because we focused a lot on this whole process of getting this new car ready to go. I'm not saying that it's not been useful or helpful to portray what it's like. I mean, it's true. This is sometimes some of the stuff that you have to deal with when you buy cars that were modified and then not properly demodified or maintained. You know, this is this is good learning experience for me for the future, especially when it comes to the fact that I'm typically called upon to help people find things, you know. But it's also good information for me as far as knowing some of what I'm going to have to deal with with 
this car moving forward and other cars in the future as well. That said, I'm glad I was able to share at least part of this experience with you guys because now you have a better understanding, maybe even an appreciation for people who do what I do. I try to build cars. You know, we all, uh, those of us that love cars, and we go to car shows to see cars and to see what people are building. And this kind of gives you insight as to what that could look like for somebody. You know, so next time you're at a car show, even if it's a car you're not a fan of, don't trash it. Because you never know what the person had to go through to get that car there. Anyways, that's all I've got for this particular episode of Car Inc. for you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, leave a comment below. What do you think of this whole ordeal with Rika Chan and trying to get her working? Let me know. I'm curious to see what you guys think. Um, whether or not I should show even more of the process to get her working or whatever the case might be. Let me know. I'd love to hear what you have to say. But again, thanks for watching. God bless y'all. And we'll see you on another episode of Car Run. Peace.